Hey there fellow hunters, welcome back to my channel, I'm Blaze, and in today's video we're going to be going over a little solo guide to the Guiding Lands. Um, as you can see, I am already here. We are running a type of, uh, what is it called, uh, an investigative research type build um it's essentially running some like gatherer's charm the ghillie mantle the hunter's greaves with scent hound um the hunter's headgear which gives you scout fly range up and scholar and i'm just the other pieces are just there for some slotting in the skills like stealth three intimidator three uh, the Marathon Runner is nice, it's so you can run around. The Tool Specialist gives you uh, your ghillie mantle back faster. Um, you know, Master Gatherer, Carving Pro, Scout Range, uh, Scout Fly Range Up, Scholar, and Scent Hound. You know, those are really, really good for, well, in my opinion, for leveling up the, uh, the Guiding Lands. Um, if you're going to do this multiplayer, you do it a different way. Because, uh, multiplayer has a type of, uh, I would say, exploit. Where you can join a, a hunt that someone's hosting, and then have them kick you. Make, make, you know, have them kick you, and then you get your, your own instance of the hunt. But you'll want to wait until uh, it's almost ready to be captured, or at least capturable, uh, before you get your before you have the other person boot you out of the out of the hunt. That'll give you your own instance of it, and you run over there and capture him. Well, the exploit to this is he can leave he can leave his quest open. With the monster still sitting there, ready to be captured. After you go ahead and turn your quest, you know, after you go ahead and capture him and get back to camp, you can rejoin his quest to capture that monster. Then you can get booted again and capture the same monster over and over and over and re just wash, rinse, and repeat. You never have to really fight a monster after you get it to the. To the uh, part where you can capture it, and it's just broken. But anyways, we're not here to do it multiplayer. We're here to do it solo because relying on other people sucks. So we're gonna jump down here real quick, and we are going to. Do we have? We don't have a monster on the field that doesn't attack on sight, which is something that you want to keep an eye for you know picking out monsters to ch you know to follow around so we'll go ahead and since well there's a poke poke where's he at okay he's right there so we'll go ahead and pike him down and we'll just go over to where he's at and throw the ghillie mantle on when we get there we'll go ahead and get the ghillie mantle ready Aye. Yeah. This is probably the easiest way that I've found to uh, level up the region areas, uh, the region levels. It is very, very lazy. Like, lazy, lazy. Like, I've never been so lazy playing this game in my life. I could watch a movie and, uh, and since intent, since I've got Intimidator, they shouldn't freaking attack. What are they doing? But anyways, uh, oh, they're just standing there being mad. They shouldn't attack. All right, but oh, well, Pookie Pookie moved areas again. That sucks. All right, well, ooh, Tigrix is in the area. Um, can you not go that way? 
Oh, you have to go up first. Oh, yeah. That sucks. We'll just go back the other way. Oh, no, that goes down. Okay. Oh, we'll just go back this way. Collect more tracks while we're at it. Bing! The best monster that I've found to do this for is, uh, oh, uh, Tits, uh, oh, uh, Kuo Yaku. Because he doesn't aggro on sight, you don't need the ghillie mantle for him. You just run up here. No oh, pookie pookies, just leaving levels behind him as he goes. Look at that. Ooh, more over there. And because of the scout range, uh, scout fly range up, you can see him for miles. Like I said, every time he moves, just follow him around. You don't have to worry about getting attacked. Which one is he going to? I thought that's where he was going. But yeah, you don't have to worry about being attacked. You could watch a movie or a YouTube video or something while just running around collecting tracks. I mean, it sounds kind of like Kulvtura because it kind of is. But, you know, it's a whole, it's not time constrained like Kulvtura is. You don't have to, you know, you're not pressed to do a, all this in eight minutes. You can take your time. You can go out of your way to collect some resources and stuff or uh, or some items for uh, for crafting like that um, but yeah it, it's very very lazily and very very easy because they drop them and like I said Kula Yaku drops crazy amounts of them um, you do this for about an hour and you'd be good. Like I said, Puka Puka drops, drops some uh, tracks every now and then. Not as much to Kuliyaku. <laughs> and actually this bill this little build I threw together just for this shows that that's a rarity 5 uh, armor and that's a rarity 5 armor and I'm in a mass I'm in a post uh, post story end game mass rank area shut up okay Is that that goes along with my build tiers that I am going to be talking about in a later video that they don't have to all be master rank uh, equipment to be effective I mean it's the reason why uh a lot of the gamma pieces in the uh, Draken armor can be used way down into master rank because they might not have the defense that uh, a lot of the master rank gear have, but they do. They do work. You can essentially get meta skills without meta armor. Alright, well. It says Pookie Pookie's gonna be leaving the area soon, so. Can I fit any? No, can't fit that either. I guess Pookie Pookie doesn't attack on sight, he just roars at you. So. Of course, the Yelly Mantle is not needed then. Like I said, if you can find, an if you can find a monster that 
doesn't attack on sight, you can just follow him around and collect those tracks. Because they are golden. Oh, I guess he does attack on sight. I better not let him hit me. Cause I am kind of made of glass right now with 300 and something defense. So we're just going to scurry out of here real quick. I think I can pick those up. No, I got too many. <laughs> got too many of those, so. What's nice is that the stealth, about the stealth, is that the monster actually always is side of you. Let's head on back. Didn't want to do it for too long for this video. Be a little, be a little boring. Huh? I'll have to edit that out. All right. Let's see here. Like I said, it's not the fastest way. It's definitely not the fastest way. But it does... It does let raise it up. And you don't have to fight nothing. And you get your research levels... While you're at it. So you kill... Two birds with one stone. So that's my little short guide to the guiding lands. On... Raising your levels. Holy crap, work suck. I'm um, raising your levels up. But there was one thing I wanted to point out, and you'll notice that mine aren't to aren't there yet. Um, until you hit master rank 49, there is a cap on those uh, region levels um, of four, so you can get it up to level four until master rank. 49 then you get a quest and after that it goes up to uh, level uh, master rank 69 you get another quest and then that bumps it up to six um, master rank 99 gives you another quest that will let you get it to level seven so but like I said it's it's not the funnest way to to farm the uh well to level up the guiding lands but it is the safest and the most afk way that i can think of is just running around collecting tracks and stuff you can pretty much watch a movie while doing it and it's nice all right now for the second part of the video we are going to be going over a few of the uh a few tips that I have for builds, uh, build making, the basics, to say it. Um, What's up, Megan? A lot of people don't seem to know exactly how to make a build, really. Um, they seem to just throw some armor together and be like, it works, so that's the equipment that I'm going to use. I mean, that's fine, I mean, but do you really want to be, you, you know, fine? Um, no, you want to be the best you can possibly do. And, you know, I mean, as long as you're having fun, that's great. But I've found that getting carted and beat up and losing and frustrating all that that stuff doesn't make for much fun so and I don't run meta builds I don't really think uh, unless your name is team dark side you don't really need a meta build so <clears throat> anyways uh, let's go ahead and get this on all right 
my tip number one would be to select a weapon. First and foremost, before you do anything else, pick you a weapon. Doesn't matter which one it is, it doesn't have to be the best weapon in the game. Just pick you a weapon. Just grab, well, I'll go with my hammer. Ah, uh, where is it? There it is. I'll go with my Bayroth Crusher 2. That looks like a great heroes. <laughs> but, anyways, it's, uh, it's an elementless we uh, hammer weapon. So, we're going to build for an elementless hammer. So, it can only reach white sharpness, so... Let's see, how much white sharpness? I mean, what am I sitting at right now? Is it only blue? Yeah, it's only blue. Which ain't bad. White's better, though. So, we'll go ahead and see if we can't bump it up to white sharpness because that's a I think it's almost a 14% increase in damage from a white sharpness over blue um, but the different the increase between white and purple is only like what 5% 4% it's not exactly that big so it's not as important as what white sharpness was in the base game but I will say that you should always try to run white sharpness if you're running a raw build but <clears throat> anyways uh, tip number two pick equipment that gives you maximum skill efficiency um, uh, you want armor with the skills that that will go good with your weapon but with as many decoration slots as possible um, there are some exceptions for this um, you know you've got the Kirin Alpha piece the chest piece the Kirin Alpha chest piece it gives you three I think it is three uh, three levels of crit And that's just crazy. Um, Alright, let's pick us some stuff here. So we're going to go ahead and throw some uh, handicraft on there real quick. Um, which one do I want? We'll go with, we'll go with a low rank, ar I mean a high rank armor set. So I can, you know, scale it out a little bit. That way I have the, I have the pieces for the video. Alright, so we're going to go with the Teostra headpiece, and the chest piece can be pretty much anything you need. Um, let's see here, let's go with, oh I want handicraft, alright there's a handicraft piece but that's only one, let's see if we can find a Handicraft 2. There we go. So we'll grab a Handicraft 2. That should give us close to it. Alright, the hand piece we're going to go with the Teostra. If I can find, there they are. The Teostra Gamma, gamma uh, hands. And then we'll go with go with another thing of uh, handicraft if we need it. Alright, we'll go with the gamma set, Shala. And then the class piece will be the Kaiser Greaves Gamma. Alright. That gives us crit I7 with Master's Touch. And white sharpness. So Let's see here. Yeah, Crit I7, Handicraft, and Tears, yeah, Ma and Master Touch. All right now that don't seem like it's all that great, but it will be. All right. So we're gonna get, whoops, forgot to. 
interesting here. We could, we could help ourselves out and equip the Razor Sharp Charm. Um, let's see here. We're going to go with the Attack Boost. I mean the Attack Charm, though. Which gives us... Where is it? Oh, it ain't on the last page, is it? Yeah, it is. Dang it. Okay. There's the Attack Charm. Alright, so now we got our armor that has skills that we want on it. With, let's see, how many how many decoration slots have we got? We should have quite a few. Yep, we do. We don't need that. So we've got level 7 handicraft. Alright. And as you can see, we got lots of skill uh, decoration slots. So we can afford a lot of skills. So first off and foremost, we're going to go ahead and throw a uh, tenderizer jewel on there. All three of them. Because, well, it's, it's pretty much priority one. Even when you don't weaken the monster. Ew, the wound, if you don't do the wounded want monster part. It still has a crazy amount of affinity for three for a level three skill. Um, all right, then we want crit jewel to give us crit boost. All right, now let's see here. I don't have any more crit boost jewels, or I'd slot in two more. So we're gonna go with the next best thing and slot in affinity sliding. And I also like to slip. Uh, where is it? A flight jewel in there. Whoops, not throttle. Flight. There it is. Flight. Now you'll notice the that the jumping attack power increased from 10% to 30, which is insane. So for hammer, I always put that in there because I like ledge hopping, and that's considered an aerial attack. Boom. Extra 30 damage. Oh, or extra 30% damage. It's nice. Add slider in there and you're almost guaranteeing critting. Alright, so we want one of these little jewels to be an attack jewel. That way it gives us attack level 4, which gives us our extra 5% affinity. So, we'll go with that. Alright, so that leaves us these three skills, uh, these three slots, giving us Crit 7, Attack Boost 4, Handicraft 4, Weakness Exploit 3, Crit Boost 1, Airborne 1, Affinity Sliding. Which, let's see here, what is ours standing still? 35? Yep, 35. That gives us 35. 35 plus, if we're hitting non wounded parts. That'll give us 65% affinity, just hitting the monster. And then, if, say, we do a slide, that gives us up to 95% affinity. Now, sl affinity sliding, um, it, it says a short time. It's 15 seconds. It don't sound like a long time, but you can get an awful lot of damage on it. Especially if you're running dual blades. Um, I think against the, uh, against the training post, I hit for 5,200 damage with a, with a dual blade set in 15, in the time that, uh, in affinity sliding was on. And there was probably about a second or so that I wasn't attacking because I was finishing up the slide when it procced and had to run over to the, to the post to start hitting it. So, you know, it does more than a rock drop on Behemoth in 15 seconds. Just from the extra affinity that gives because it can crit more. So this is sitting at 95% affinity after sliding and still has open slots on gems. Um, 
if you really, really wanted, you could slot in some more attack jewels. RNG is not my friend at all. I think he hates me and wants me to jump off a cliff or something. Because I've got one attack jewel here, which I will say is the story, the base game story attack jewel. Then we got these two, which one was from the uh, the Leshen quest, uh, the Leshen hunt, where you save the Puke Puke and you get the attack jewel. And then the third one is from the uh, little 13 million copies bonus they gave us. Yeah, so RNG has not been my friend at all. So you could stack three of them in there and you could get attack seven uh, with crit I7. But we are going to do this. We are going to throw a Vitality Jewels on there. Because this is something a lot of people I've noticed don't really do a whole lot. And that is put in some uh, Oh, what's it called? Some uh, survival skills. You know, you survive survivability. Oh yeah, that's right. And because it's an elementless weapon, we can throw elementless in there. So we'll go ahead and slot that in. So we've got uh, health, uh, health boost level two and handicraft on that one. All right, so we got, so with it filled out, and this was just pieced together really quick, right in front of you. We have Teoster's Technique Master's Touch, Crit I7, Attack Boost 4, Handicraft 4, Weakness Exploit Level 3, Health Boost Level 2, Crit Boost Level 1, Airborne Level 1, Affinity Sliding, and Non-Elemental Boost. That all together gives us, like I said, a 95% crit and a 1622 unbuffed attack. Which, it can go up even further. I could swap out some stuff for peak, uh, peak performance or, or something, but... Alright, we'll go ahead and we'll eat for attack up large real quick all right and that puts us at 1700 even with a 95 percent crit against non-weak points or non yeah against non-weak points or non uh non uh wounded there we go, non-wounded. If you're running the full 50% from wounding a monster part, you'll have 85% affinity, and then you do your little slide. That's guaranteed crit hits with 1700 attack. So, we'll go ahead and go in the item box here. Make sure we've got... Alright, we won't bother with a pill because it only takes, it only lasts 20, well, you know what, we'll go ahead. No, we won't bother with it. It only lasts 20 seconds. So, anyways, we're going to take this over to the training area. And, uh, whoops, wrong one, that one. Whoops, why did I put it away? I could probably go there. Yeah. We'll go to the training area real quick. And we'll pop those, uh, the demon drug and the, uh, uh, the demon powder and the, uh, the mite seed. And then I will do a, the big bang, uh, oh, what's that? Oh, we'll do the big bang, the uh, brutal big bang. There we go. Um, 
Well, I could, probably could have just built it in here, but we were in the middle of another. Alright, so let's see here. We'll go ahead and hit up a demon drug. Oh yeah, and if you guys didn't know, any items used in the training area are not used, uh, you know, out of your inventory. So, you get the bonus, doesn't go away. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and go with... Hmm, demon powders? Alright. And that gives us an 1830 base raw. See, do I have... Yes, and I do have all four of those. So I have both Power Charm and the Power Talon. Which gives extra. But yeah, we're setting an 1830 for the next what three minutes two minutes something like that so, the charge brutal big bang final shot hits for 337 and that was without slider so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and swing this back charge it up we'll go ahead and go ahead and get that affinity sliding active and get that Pretty much 100% crit. 439. And like I said, it's constant. For 15 seconds, you get 100% affinity. And you'll see a little icon that's flashing up there in the corner. That's your affinity uh, boost from there. So as soon as it disappears, you know your affinity is gone. You'll want to go over to, you can go over, you know, you, you want to slide again. But anyways, like I said, this is 100% affinity, period. These are all crits. Every one of them. And you can tell they're crits by the little slash that goes across the screen. I mean, this build can be more, you know, can be beefed up even more if I had, uh, you know, the uh, the master rank equivalents. They have more more skills and more uh, decoration slots, or at least higher level decoration spot slots. Um, but yeah, that's just a few tips I. I, uh, I should, you know, on build, on making a build, it's, uh, it's not real hard, they don't have to be game-breakingly meta, you know, they just have to work for you, but I do want people to learn that, you know, you don't want to put skills in your build that don't actually help you out, um, a lot of people tend to put um, decorations and that don't do them any good like I've seen like some of these sleep coats and poison coats on builds that were melee weapons these are bow only they're literally the only reason they exist is so that a bow can use those particular coatings um, I've seen a release jewel with a non-elemental boost. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of... I mean, there are a lot of skills, and you can play a lot of different ways. But don't, don't waste your jewel slots. You're only hurting yourself doing it. Uh, make sure that... That's why I say pick your weapon... Pick your armor with skills on it that you want. And then slot in to fill in those skills that you need for, for that you want after you after that. So, I mean as you can see I got a pretty dang good build thrown together that deals a tr a truckload of damage. And that wasn't my build. Yeah, and it took, I mean, the most 
rare rare decoration I have in there is a tenderizer jewel. I mean, I only have, well, I'll, I would have to say the rarest, probably the critical jewel. I've only got one of those. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, they do have gamma, but we, if you're in master rank, you can actually go get a, uh, a low end basic master rank, you know, build and weapon and go tear up some gamma, ga I mean, tear up some, uh, the high rank monsters and the tempered monsters and the arch tempered monsters. You can go F them up so bad. So, anyways, I'm going to leave this one here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, and I hope you guys took something away from it. And maybe you'll be able to go off and make the next meta build. Who knows? Um, anyways, thanks for watching, and uh, happy hunting.